in this video, we're going to focus on carbons that are attached to benzene rings, so-called benzylic positions. Like we saw for allylic systems, benzylic cations, anions, and radicals are relatively stable due to resonance delocalization. This makes a lot of reactions relatively easy at the benzylic position that would be difficult or impossible or prohibitively slow at plain old alkyl carbons. So benzylic positions are adjacent to aromatic rings. You'll hear this term apply to positions that are adjacent to other types of aromatic rings, not just benzene as well, but the prototypical example is this carbon highlighted in purple linked directly to a benzene ring. And you can imagine that if we didn't have the right half of the benzene ring, we'd be looking at an allylic carbon. So there's a deep analogy here between allylic and benzylic systems. Charges, positive and negative charges, and radical character are stabilized at benzylic carbons due to resonance. And we can see this, for example, if we look at the benzylic cation. So this is a cation at this carbon directly linked to an aromatic ring. And we can imagine pushing electrons to show that positive charge delocalized over three carbons in the ring. And we want to take note of those carbons. This is going to be interesting later. Notice that ortho to that carbon and para to uh, ortho to the position where the cationic carbon is linked right there and para to that carbon are the positions where positive charge shows up in these resonance forms as well as the other ortho position. And we could add curved arrows to show the interconversion of these resonance forms. And if you want practice with resonance, I encourage you to pause the video now and give that a go. So the overall resonance hybrid here has partial positive charge, of course, at that original benzylic carbon, but also shared over predominantly these three carbons within the benzene ring, although thanks to inductive effects, really all of these carbons are sharing that positive charge to some extent. So the benzylic cation is heavily stabilized by resonance. The same is true of anions and radicals, and we could draw analogous resonance forms for the benzylic anion and radical as well. And this enables a lot of chemistry at benzylic positions, some of which you may have seen before. For example, radical bromination. If we treat a compound like this with n bromo which is a source of bromine radicals, we get selective bromination at this benzylic position. Notice there's an H here that's implied that gets replaced with a bromine selectively. And bromine doesn't show up anywhere else in the product because the allylic radical intermediate here is relatively stable relative to the other possible alkyl radicals. SN1 and SN2 substitution occur rapidly at benzylic positions. So for example, this tertiary alkyl halide, really a benzylic uh, bromide, reacts rapidly in SN1 with water, even under neutral conditions, because the benzylic cation is relatively stable. So when bromide departs, we've got a cation stabilized by resonance, that is relatively stable. As cations go, that gets attacked by water and ultimately we end up with a neutral alcohol as the product. Here's an example of an SN2 reaction of benzyl bromide, where this carbon is relatively electrophilic as a result of the stabilization of positive charge at that position. And so hydroxide anion can pretty easily come in and displace bromide in an SN2 elementary step to give benzyl alcohol quite rapidly. And here there's not a cationic or anionic intermediate, but the inductive effect of the phenyl ring and, st and uh, the sort of semi-resonance effect, there's no direct resonance here, of stabilizing positive charge at that position makes this carbon pretty electrophilic. Elimination reactions at benzylic positions are also heavily favored. So for example, this case in the bottom right is an, e uh, bottom left rather, is an E1 reaction where concentrated H2SO4 protonates the hydroxyl group and water is lost to put a cation right here. That's a benzylic position, right? So this benzylic cation is relatively stable and a base, probably water, comes along and deprotonates at a beta carbon to give us this alkenyl benzene or uh, more colloquially known as a styrene product right here. So that's E1 elimination. E2 eliminations are also rapid at benzylic position. So here where we're using a stronger base, sodium ethoxide, this is going to involve E2 elimination, deprotonation at a beta carbon along with departure of the leaving group at the same time. And this leads to a similar styrene product via an E2 mechanism now rather than E1. So overall, benzylic 
positions are generally activated towards all kinds of reactions involving cations, anions, and radicals. One specific type of reaction that we're going to look at here that's going to be useful for us later at benzylic positions is the oxidation of an alkyl chain linked to a benzene ring down to a benzylic acid. And this can be done two different ways, using sodium dichromate and an acid, H2SO4, and water is one way to do this, and using potassium permanganate and heat followed by acid is another way to do this. And this is an oxidation process. We'll talk a lot more about oxidation and reduction in another unit, but for the time being, we want to recognize that these, this carbon highlighted in purple, the benzylic position is undergoing oxidation. We know that because CH bonds at that benzylic position, which are implied, are being replaced with CO bonds in this carboxyl group in the product. These conditions, by the way, are collectively known as Jones conditions or the Jones oxidation. We'll see this, uh, these conditions again in the course in a different context, not involving aromatic rings as well. So this is an oxidation process. We know that because CH bonds in the starting material are replaced with CO bonds in the product. And we'll have a lot more to say about why this constitutes oxidation later in the course. Suffice it to say now, the electron density at that carbon has gone down as a result of the replacement of CH bonds with CO bonds. And a similar thing is happening in the bottom case. Now one thing that's remarkable about this reaction is that the length of this alkyl chain actually doesn't matter as long as we have hydrogens at the benzylic carbon. So as long as you've got a CH2 group at that benzylic carbon, this reaction works pretty much regardless of what shows up on the other side of that benzylic CH2 group. So it's a pretty remarkable reaction that we're going to take advantage of later when we're looking at the synthesis of substituted benzenes.